What you know about going out head west? Made back three TVs all up in the headrest. Makes niggas at Madison Square Garden. 20 million sold and we still catching charges. I'm Jay. I'm Tom. We are VIMTV Velocities and Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Tom, we're we're doing rap albums. Yeah. We got I got a couple of rap albums in this set. Awesome. Just reviewed Run the Jewels by Killer Mike and LP, an awesome collaboration. Um, you know, we rarely get the chance to do multiple rap albums in the same set, so being able yeah. to compare and contrast different styles of the rap genre, which is very, like I said in the last review, very prolific, is always something that's very fun. Now, one of the just legends of rap music mm -hmm. is a guy by the name of Jay-Z. Yeah. What do you know about Jay-Z? We're going to review his newest album, his 12th album, Magna Carta, Holy Grail. Yeah, Jay-Z's been around since the 90s and has put out some of the more notable rap albums in the rap canon. Uh, and that's what's really given him that legend status. Uh, albums like his debut, Reasonable Doubt. Um, you know, he had the Life and Times of, of Sean Carter, the, the Volumes 1, 2, and 3 albums, Black Album, which was supposed to be his last album. I actually think it's funny you're wearing your Green Bay shirt because him and Brett Favre are like the kings of the Are You Going to Retire or Not Club. Uh, Brett Favre's a Viking. Oh, oh, we don't talk about him anymore in that context, do we? Okay, so touchy, touchy subject. I shouldn't have gone there, but um, but yeah, you know, since his faux retirement, if you if you want to call it that, in in like 2004, I think it was with the Black Album. He's come out with albums since then. He came out with the Blueprint Three. Now we get Magna Carta, Holy Grail. We had an album with him and Kanye a couple mm -hmm. years back. Watch the Throne. Uh, so he's, you know, he's really out there. He's very much a businessman. Uh, puts himself out there just so much. And, you know, he couldn't stay away from the rap game, and it's because he's a big part of it. But what's interesting to me about Jay-Z is that what really has made him at the top of the rap game and what's made him still very notable and relevant is that he just has a very different demeanor and approach to rap. He's known for his very fluid uh, and, and smooth rapping flow and style. He's also known not really as, like, one of the aggressive, bad boys of hip hop but also not as one of those just just pop chart guys but he still remains very popular right yeah you know, i mean he's made some club hits but you listen to his stuff and you don't get the idea that that's what he's focused on right uh and and at the same time he's he's not starting feuds all the time he's been in some but that's you know that's not what he's about you can tell he's very much about the music and it's something i've always respected albeit the fact that over the course of his 12 now albums uh, I don't think that he's been super consistent in quality. There, there have been some albums that I've really loved. Uh, my favorites, for example, are probably Black Album and The Blueprint. Um, but, I mean, those are terrific albums, and Reasonable Doubt is very good, too. But he's got some weaker ones in there, and so, you know, I don't know if he really deserves the legend status that he has just for the sake of that inconsistency. But I if think you're he does. If you're grading him just on his good stuff, I would say yes. I think he does. I mean, he's done so much for the genre, and, yeah. and I think that his story is, is, is so admirable because... I mean, yeah. you just, like any any sort of research that you do on this guy, you know, he as a kid would like just tap out beats and write rhymes and stuff like that, and and he really did just work his way up into this legend mm -hmm. status. So one thing we have to address though is that at some like his his success transcended music, it transcended yeah. rap and music in general, and it moved on into other things like sports and <laughs> fashion and yeah. um, just general entrepreneurship. I mean, he did crazy things, and now he's one of the most wealthy. Um, you know, musicians in, in in the world. He yeah. has a net worth of over five hundred million. He married Beyonce Knowles, who has done pretty well for herself. <laughs> on top of it, I mean, he's a really well-off guy. The reason why I think this is notable is because you know, as these as these artists who achieve just it, this unimaginable level of success mm -hmm. come out with new music I always wonder so how do you make your music relate to the people who don't have that level of success two guys in a with a just a, a crappy camera doing a doing a video yeah. a music review show you guys out there who are just you know college students or just you know working it every day listening to music just because that's your passion like you don't have that same you can't it's hard for him to relate to the people who are digesting mm -hmm. his music that always bothers me how as an artist how do you take that and then make really good music on top of it mm -hmm. and not let all of the other crap and noise that I'm sure is going on with that level of success in your day-to-day -day life how do you not let that ruin your album so going into Magna Carta Holy Grail it was it was interesting because I was I, I mean I I can't help but assess that as yeah. I'm going through this and honestly there's a number of tracks on this record that I think are top 
notch that I'm just I'm I'm really just a big fan of. Um, Tom Ford I think is really good. Uh, track six F U T W is really good. Somewhere in America the track seven mm -hmm. um, and all, and Tom and I, you both you and I both like BBC. Yeah. One thing I want to note about this album is while I think that a lot of the production is where the strength of it is. As an album, this is a a really long album, and it used a bunch of different people at on on you know helping out with the production. Yeah. You have Timbaland, on, who has probably had the bulk of the production work on his plate, but also Swiss Beats, Pharrell Williams, a number of other guys, um, and and you can really kind of tell that there's multiple producers working. Too many on cooks the in the kitchen. There's too many yeah. cooks in the kitchen. It doesn't have this consistent feel track to track. It doesn't feel like an album. It feels mm -hmm. like this just behemoth uh, smorgasbord of different ideas and production styles and to be quite honest the thing the, the biggest gripe that I have about it is Jay-Z is just really inconsistent on yeah. this album I mean I feel like his his lyricism is at times just putrid and at times it's pretty good yeah um, but more often than not I found it putrid and I thought, thought his delivery just wasn't up to, to no. his former quality and the, the two big things about Jay-Z that I've really liked that have kept me with him throughout the years is I feel like he has always had really catchy hooks. Right. You listen to a lot of his songs and they, they just stick with you. Go back and listen to some tracks from, from Black Album, tracks like Lucifer and 99 Problems. God, those songs stick with me. I don't feel like the hooks were very memorable here. I agree, I agree. In fact, sometimes they were downright obnoxious. Mm -hmm. Track 15, La Familia, absolutely terrible. One of the just the most mind-numbing terrible choruses that I've ever heard in rap music. Like, it was that offensive to me on that particular track. And at the same time, during the verses, where he usually has this very uh, this very sly flow uh, that you can really get behind that just sounds super smooth, I thought it felt a little choppy and a little awkward. It just wasn't up to snuff. And you, com you, you combine that with the very mixed message that you get from this album. Uh, I just felt like there was not a unified message or persona. You compare this, go way back to his first album, Reasonable Doubt, where a lot about what he was rapping about is just, just getting into the rap game. Mm -hmm. Just getting into it. And you mm -hmm. felt like you could really connect with that. You mentioned how do you connect with this guy who has a net worth of $500 million and is probably, let's face it, a little disconnected from his roots and where he came from. Absolutely. As real he tries to be, and I respect that. He seems like a really yeah, nice tries. guy. I've heard, I've heard good things. But, but when you look at the lyrical content of his actual rap, a lot of this just has to do with the fact that, you know, he's a family man now. And the oh, fact that cool. he's freaking rich. Right. He sings a lot about being rich and being successful. And he's still on top, and he's doing yeah. all these... Th I mean, it, you, you don't, it gets tacky at times. Right? Yeah, show, don't tell. Right. Don't tell me that you're still on top of your game and tell me about all the put albums out, you've put owned. Out an album put out an album songs. that is worth... Proving that. And I mean, the second half of this record, other than the track BBC, I just yeah. feel is just significantly weaker than <laughs> the front yeah. half. And there were some still some sore spots on the front half. Track four, I'm not going to say it. It's the one featuring uh, Rick Ross. It, it, it was just not a good song. It just, <laughs> no. it just was repulsive yeah. from beginning to end. And I just feel like there's a number of those points on this mm -hmm. record. If if, if Jay-Z could just simplify it, to pick one producer, or just produce it himself, <laughs> yeah. one idea with one cohesive sound for just 40 minutes, just 10 tracks, but four minutes a track, that's all you have to do. <laughs> it would be a mind-blowingly good album because the guy knows what he's doing. He's very talented. Yeah. He has a lot of weapons in his arsenal of rap music. Like He could make a really solid album. This just isn't it. He tried to appeal to too many different fans. He had tried to be too commercial with it because there's a number of songs like, the, I gotta say it, uh, Part 2 on the Run featuring his wife Beyonce is clearly made to be a radio hit. And, yeah. and I'm sorry, but when you do that on a hip-hop album, you're doing it for the commercial aspect. You're doing it because this this you want your record to go platinum before it even hits the shelves. And you have to have your wife on the album. Well, or else you're having problems at home. Just, yeah. yeah. He's got 99 problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll go ahead. But, but anyways, I mean, I just feel like this could have been so much more than what it was. There's still some good tracks yeah. on here, like I said, but as an album, it just didn't. There's just too many problems with it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go 57. I'm going 57, too. Cool. We're a little bit harsh on this album. Keep in mind, Velocities of Music is all about the album listening experience. If, if the artist has good music and doesn't present it in an album format that really works and the songs don't mesh together at all, it usually, even if the, some songs are just phenomenal, will still rate things a little lower. So you got to keep 
keep that in mind mm -hmm. as we listen to this. If you guys are into Magna Carta Holy Grail or are just big Jay-Z fans in general and love this album, that's awesome! Keep listening to this! Keep loving this! We totally get it. This is just our opinion and we're just sharing it with you to get the conversation started. Speaking of which, if you want to talk about this album with us, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave us a comment at www.velocitiesinmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesinmusic. As always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and tell Tommy looks good in my shirt. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward. After them projects, now we on the states. Up from the bottom, I know you can relate. Fuck up the world.